You're watching the KOAM Morning News on Fox 14. Right now at 7, the city of Miami broke ground on a new teen center. Melissa Alexis shares how the new facility will impact the community. Also, Erie residents are celebrating the opening of a new daycare center. Our very own Samantha Walker shows us how the new daycare center will help a growing need. And we've got some clouds out there this morning and a very warm start. Summer heat, like that says, is returning. Look at that forecast. Get you out the doors. Come out. The four states most watched news starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to the KOM Morning News on Fox 14. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Chris Warner just after 7 o'clock now on this Wednesday morning, September the 18th. Fall officially starts on yes. Sunday. And summer has decided that... Right. It, <laughs> it's still summer and it's going to remind it's us of so that. Fast, yeah. yeah, but mm. when fall starts, it may actually feel like fall. Which would be, be a so twist. Nice. Yeah, yeah. that'd be a strange welcome, twist in the air. Welcome surprise there. Yes, it would be. We'll talk about that a little later, but we got some news to share with you this Absolutely. morning. Absolutely. Well, members of the Miami, Oklahoma community gathered for the groundbreaking of the Boys and Girls Club of Ottawa County's new team center. KOM's Melissa Alexis. Uh, shares what the new center will bring and what it means to the community. The Boys and Girls Club of Ottawa County Teen Center in Miami is a project that's been in the works for about 33 months, and now it's finally becoming a reality. The teenagers here in Miami um, who are looking for something positive and productive to do in, in the out of school time. So ensuring that teenagers have a safe place to go when they're not in school. The Boys and Girls Club Teen Center has come a long way and the building is in progress. The center will provide useful resources for teens such as resume building and workforce development ensuring that they have positive mentors in their life to encourage them throughout their lives to be successful and to have a plan for the future. They don't know how to do a resume or nobody's ever taught them, so you know that's kind of an exciting that they're going to talk about that. As part of the construction, they're planning to build an art room, a gymnasium, and other activities. It'll be a gym, so you know they can do sports in the gym, you know, I think basketball, you know, different things like that that they could do, soccer. They can be active, so they're not on their phone, they can be running around having fun. You have a new gym, you have um, new facilities, clean facilities, they can do different arts programs, lots of different things that McKenzie does from athletics to arts and different things that, the, that all the kids can get and take a part in. They're looking forward to providing a new place where teens can socialize and meet other kids their age. Reporting in Miami, Melissa Alexis, KOAM News. Certainly um, an impressive project. Yes. I know they've been waiting a long time for this, hopefully by uh, about a little less than a year from now. Yeah, they'll have it up and running. So yeah, they say in May 2025, hopefully it should yeah. be. Yeah, and what it took 33 months, right. I think, you know, for them to get to this yeah. point. That's got to be exciting, though, you know, reaching that goal finally, like the, the feeling of wow. Yes. Great wow. work. Here we are. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, well, if you're working outside today or especially tomorrow or Friday, mm -hmm. it is going to be August like. We're, tell you about that by first looking outside because we have a few clouds to show you from our camera downtown Pittsburgh. There they are. We're looking east and you can see down to the east along 4th Street that there are a few clouds out there and that will head over to Joplin. Also looking east, and you can see birds and also clouds kind of down low in the horizon there. But as the sun rises this morning, Modoc camera 20th and range line, another view of those clouds. And you can see they even stretch out far to our north across the area. And so that's why it's mostly clear to partly cloudy. Now we're not dealing with the same level of fog we were yesterday at this time, but if you're on 54 around Iola, uh, you need to make sure you're watching out up there. Northeast Oklahoma starting to see improvements, but the Grand Lake area down by Grove, still some fog to contend with as well. So just, you know, be smart, be safe and arrive alive. Future track for today, we're looking at the same thing as yesterday, but a little hotter as well. Partly cloudy skies by late afternoon, early evening. We'll start to go mostly clear out there. Our temperatures today yeah, upwards of uh, 10 degrees above where they should be. And it's almost we've spent most of the morning well above normal should be in the upper 50s out there. We are not 65 in Joplin and Pittsburgh around the region this morning temperatures. We do have some lower 60s really just about Cassville and Nawada as well as Jay. The rest of us <coughs> excuse me, are into the mid to upper 60s across the area. Partly cloudy skies today. Highs right around 90. Some of you may be 88 to 89. Some of you may be 91, 92, but about 10 degrees off of where we should be for this time of year. It's going to continue to heat up as we head into our Thursday and Friday. Then we have that cold front Saturday night. 
heading into the first day of fall. We'll go over those details and some rain chances here in just a few more minutes. Elise. All right, thanks, Chris. Well, authorities investigate the discovery of a man's body in a ditch along Interstate 44. The body was found near the Prigmore Street exit at mile marker 14.8 late Monday afternoon. Investigators have identified the man as 63 year old Jesse Gilmore from Oklahoma. Now authorities are looking for a vehicle related to this incident. It's a red 2020 Chevy Cobalt with the Oklahoma license plate PIH 667. Authorities say it has significant damage to the passenger side rear door. Anyone who has seen this car in the past day or so should contact the Jasper County Sheriff's Office. Authorities are not giving further details about the circumstances in this case, including how the car might be involved, but they say an autopsy is scheduled for Friday. Well, a fire truck and pickup collide in Newton County. The crash occurred Monday afternoon on Zebra Road, two miles south of Fairview. The Freightliner fire truck was on its way to another crash with its lights and siren on as it made its way through an intersection. The pickup failed to yield to the fire truck as it entered the intersection and struck the emergency vehicle. A female passenger in the pickup suffered serious injuries. The driver of the pickup and a juvenile passenger had minor injuries. All three were taken to Mercy Joplin. And to be the first to see breaking news, weather and sports, you can download the KOEM News app. It's available free of charge in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. Just search for the KOEM News app. Well, access to child care can be scarce in rural communities, but Erie, Kansas hopes to help correct that problem with the opening of a new child care center. This week, community members celebrated the center with a ribbon cutting and open house. KOM Samantha Walker has more on how the center hopes to address the growing needs for accessible child care in the area. Child care is um, it's the foundation to a community, I believe. Without child care, people can't work. For many working parents, child care is a necessity. But according to the Center for American Progress, 44% of people living in Kansas live in a child care desert, meaning there is not enough spots for child care compared to the amount of children in the area. Erie is one of those communities in a child care desert. We were full, and I had 28 on a waiting list with people calling. And I hated telling people no but I had nowhere to put them. When the Erie Community Child Care Center started a few years ago, it was able to take in 22 kids. The administrator for the facility says those spots quickly filled up, but there was still a great need for child care in the community. We had some parents that were driving to Chanute to drop off kids and then coming back to work and then going and getting them again. We had some parents that were taking kids to work with them business owners that were having to take parent, kids with them to, the, to their workplace. It's what made them apply for a child care capacity accelerator grant through the Kansas Children's Cabinet. The grant provided funding for the center to build a new facility and increase its capacity to more than 70 children. I believe that it is meeting a, a need for um, the parents to be able to work and, and maintain a good income for their family. The president of the Erie Chamber of Commerce says the facility is not only making it easier for working parents, but also bringing more jobs to the community. It also has created jobs for the community. If you don't have a school, if you don't have a store, you don't have daycare, people are not going to stay in town. They're going to move to where they do have those things available. The facility opened at the end of June and now has 14 staff members. Diller says the child care center's role in addressing the child care desert is a work in progress, but it's already proving to help the community. I think that we will be able to meet the need of this community and, and maybe help out with some of the others. Reporting in Erie, Samantha Walker, KOAM News. With the expansion, the Erie Community Child Care Center is still accepting new families and is looking for additional staff. Anyone interested is encouraged to reach out to the facility. And those are our top news stories in this half hour. Coming up next, Kylie Vasquez and Matthew Bragg join us in the studio this morning with an invitation to attend this year's Sip and Shop event. We'll be right back, but first, here's a live look from the Humboldt Square.
Welcome back. If you enjoy supporting local businesses and sipping on a refreshing beverage, then you should make plans to head over to Nexus and OCH Event Center this weekend. We have Kylie Vasquez with us this morning with an invitation to participate in this year's Sip and Shop event in Web City. Welcome to you. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. So talk to me a little bit about the Sip and Shop event that's happening. Of course. So the Sip and Shop event is going to be a collaboration of multiple vendors coming into mm. our venue. They're going to be showcasing all of their wonderful products and we're going to have a whole bunch of different kinds of people there. The Society Marketplace yes. is going to be there. They're going to be offering a whole bunch of beauty services. Mm. We'll have a permanent jewelry shop, a charm bar as well. We're also going to have a 360 photo booth as well if you want to document any of your purchases or just even document just you being there. Absolutely. So talk to me about why it's so important to support support local businesses in the area mm -hmm. and to kind of have, you know, this big event where they all come together and we show their support yes. for them. Well, I mean, as you know, small businesses are really the backbone mm -hmm. of America. We're really wanting to put a spotlight on all of those businesses that have really affected this community, yes. that are a part of this community, and it really just gives them an opportunity to show everybody else what they have. Absolutely. So lots to look forward to. Now this event is this weekend. Talk to me about the day and the time where people mm -hmm. can come and attend it. You can come on Saturday. It'll be from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Admission is free even if you just want to come around and look. If you don't have to buy anything, if you're just coming up, it really shows your support for the town. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Is this the first year? How many years has this been going on? This is going to be the first year that we Exciting. have been doing this, but we are so excited to continue to do events like these in the future with any other coordinators as well. Absolutely. And if people want to find more information on this event, where can they do so? You can look on Facebook. The event itself is called the Web City Downtown Sip and Shop. As you can see right behind me, that's our little logo that we've got for it. We have been putting a lot of vendor spotlights so you can learn about each different business that's going to be showing up. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Uh, stick around. We'll be back with more right after this. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News 716, just about to be 717 on this Wednesday morning. Sun is rising. Our camera in downtown Pittsburgh. We got some clouds out there, so we are mostly clear to partly cloudy across the region. Another great view of that sunrise from our camera at 7th and range line in Joplin. And the sun kind of the brightness is kind of canceling out. If you look close, there's some clouds. There's some clouds over there as well. And a better view of them, though, from Modoc Camera 20th and Range Line. Looking back to the north, got a few clouds there and a few drifting off uh, or stretching out to the north and northwest out there. KDOT Camera 69, Kansas Crossing. No sunshine on the highway just yet, but that, of course, will begin to change. Future of track for today is very similar to how it's been uh, the last few days out here, or the last couple of days, where we're going to have partly cloudy skies through the early evening. Or sorry, My goodness, it, it's been a long day. Through the late afternoon into the early evening, and then we'll go mostly clear overnight tonight and then we'll see some rain. So here's what's happening. We get the boundary out to our west. It is very slow moving. It's trigger showers and storms out west. They are progressively getting closer and closer each time. Tonight, more storms out to our west. They should be in a dying state by the time they get here early Thursday, but a few isolated showers and storms will be possible, mainly in the Kansas and Oklahoma. And then those will fizzle out. The problem is they're going to leave some not so pleasant moisture. We're talking heat index values tomorrow could be approaching 100 degrees. So that's what we're that's what we mean when we say summer's not quite done yet. Getting in one last hurrah before the official start of fall and it's going to get pretty darn toasty. Then by Thursday evening, the frontal boundary gets a little closer, triggers more storms. These ones may actually make it in to our area in the parts of Kansas, Oklahoma. So here we are by eight. We've got scattered thunderstorms across southeast Kansas stretching into Oklahoma. Some of these may make it to Missouri but they'll be in a kind of a dying state by the time they get here. And we could see a few additional uh, scattered storms across parts of southeast Kansas late Thursday into early Friday. Now, with all that moisture in place, it's going to be hot and muggy again Friday, but that's going to allow as the boundary gets closer for a few more pop up storms initially through the day on Friday. So they'll be relatively isolated. And then by late Friday, we'll get another round of showers and storms, but the frontal boundary itself still not here yet. So we'll have more rain chances, which is good news. Now, the only bad news is, is this. First, this is again for really tonight, early tomorrow morning. Could see a few of those thunderstorms out west make it into parts of Kansas and Oklahoma. Then tomorrow evening, we do have a low risk out there for some large hail, maybe some damaging wind gusts with some of those storms. So we'll keep an eye on that for you tomorrow evening. And then we'll have scattered thunderstorms again throughout the day on our Friday. Quick look at temperatures. It is mild for this time of year. Should be in the upper 50s. We're at 65. Wind is calm in Joplin. And around the area, we've been in the mid to upper 60s for the most
most part through the majority of the morning. Earlier today, uh, earlier this morning, rather, Neotache Parsons were at 70 degrees to start the day. So it's a bit on the toasty side, at least, again, for this time of year. Partly cloudy skies through the morning, upper 60s by 8, near 80 by 11. Highs today right around 90 degrees, give or take a degree or two. Mid 90s Thursday and Friday, and then an unpleasant heat index values to go along with that. Storm chances Saturday, low 90s, cold front Saturday night drops us 31 degrees and then keeps us into the low 80s for the first day of fall. More storms on Sunday and then temperatures may be even below normal as we head into the next work week. Let's check your forecast. We're back with more right after this. All right, welcome back. Well, the Missouri Southern Division of Theater is excited to invite you to their performance of Saltwater Moon tonight. We have Matthew Bragg with us this morning to share about what you can expect when you attend. Welcome to you. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. So can you talk to me a little bit about this production of Saltwater Moon and, and kind of how you all have been working towards this, this production and opening night? Oh, yeah, of course. So Saltwater Moon is an old timey romantic play focused on two people, Jacob Mercer, who's coming back from World War One, finally after mm -hmm. two years, and he comes back to woo his old sweetheart, Mary <laughs> Snow. Unfortunately, Mary is engaged now mm -hmm. is isn't exactly high over heels with Jacob Mercer at the moment. And so the play mainly focuses on the development of these characters and their past history and just their intimate relationship and how leaving for the war affected them certainly, so much. Certainly. Well, it sounds it sounds <laughs> exciting. So talk to me a little bit about, you know, working towards this production. You, you mentioned to me that you've been working on it for quite a while. So how does it yes. feel to finally hit the stage and perform for, for the audience? We're ready. We're ready. We have two fantastic actors playing with this, this role and mm -hmm. we, are, we are so very excited to sh share this wonderful romantic lovely story yes. about these two lovely lovebirds and being a part of this rehearsal process i've seen them grow oh, i've seen them experiment artistically with mm -hmm. so many different items and it's just been such a joy to watch them on stage and to finally go ahead and get this production on its feet yes and for our performances it's really wonderful absolutely and talk to me a little bit about why it's so important to go out and support your college thespians who are you know um performing and really you know working on their craft and why people should come out and see this show absolutely uh, the arts is such a form of expression mm. and theater is perhaps one of the biggest ones i can point to and the stories that we share, the stories that we see, the stories that we tell are the ones that we tell our future mm -hmm. generations mm -hmm. and how most people are going to remember us. Absolutely. And if people want to attend this show tonight, when and where is it going to be? Yeah, that is going to be at the Bud Walton Black Box mm -hmm. at 1230 and 7.30 today, Wednesday. Students are free. You don't have to pay for okay. your ticket. And the matinee 1230 is specifically for students. So if you're a student, please come to the 1230 performance. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Anywhere else people can find information on this production? Absolutely. You can find the production on our website. Perfect. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being with us this morning. And we'll be right back with more news and weather after this. The four states most watched news starts now. Welcome back to the KOA Morning News on Fox 14. It's currently 7:28. I'm Elise Snowy. The Lebec Community College hosted the Cardinal Connect Business Showcase on campus yesterday. The free event allows for area businesses and organizations to showcase their products, services, and any job openings they have for students and staff. Now, the event is also an opportunity for students to learn more about opportunities with companies and organizations in their community. They can come set up a booth for free um, to interact with students. Um, they can use it as a job hunt opportunity. Um, they can use it as a way to engage with students to um, promote their business. There were more than 30 different businesses and organizations registered to participate in the showcase. Well, young and Old artists can experiment with different media during diff creation station at the Smiva Center for the Arts. Now, the center offers drop in Tuesday afternoons where each week the focus varies from painting and drawing to clay and sculpture to printmaking. 
Stacy Hyatt who teaches the class and she says she loves showing kids the week's projects and then watching them get excited about what they can create. I love all mediums of art and it's usually what inspires me or what project that I'm working on or going to be working on and then I say I think the kids will like this if we do it this way. I don't really have a set curriculum. I do things in advance but I just want to introduce artists, different mediums, you know, and try and keep it all related to their age level. Creation Station runs from 4 to 5.15 every Tuesday and pre-registration is recommended as space is limited. Well, Joplin residents have another chance to get rid of some yard waste. The city will open its free tree limb and brush drop off site this coming Friday and Saturday from 830 AM to 3 PM. Now the drop off site is located at 1702 North Schifferdecker Avenue. Leaves, grass clippings, treated wood construction debris will not be accepted. This service is for Joplin residents only. Now let's check in with Chris for a look at the forecast. Elves a pretty decent start to the day. Mild out there, but looking good from our camera downtown Pittsburgh. Got the sun rising, had a few clouds here and there, so we are mostly clear to partly cloudy. Another great shot of that sunrise from our camera at 7th and range line. A little further to south, 20th and range line, the MoDOT camera there. The sun rising, it's kind of blinding out some of the visible clouds, but you can see we do still have some cloud cover across the area this morning. Fog, we're still dealing with some into northeastern Oklahoma, so if you are traveling down there, just keep that in mind. Miami of Anita Grove, all reporting some reduced visibilities, as well as Iola up there. So if you're traveling on 54 uh, around the Iola area, again, slow down, give yourself time to get where you're going. Future track for today, similar to yesterday, we are looking at partly cloudy skies by late afternoon, early evening. They will start to go mostly clear across the area and temperatures today upwards of 10 degrees above normal. Should be in the upper 50s now, and we are not. 65 is where we sit in both Joplin and in Pittsburgh and around the area. Temperatures mild out there. Most of us mid to upper 60s to get this day started. As we head through today, again, partly cloudy skies will eventually make uh, right around 90. Some of you about 88, 89. Some of you maybe 91, 92, but right around that zone still about 10 degrees above normal for us as we continue to heat up. Temperatures are really going to heat up Thursday and Friday, and we're talking heat index values approaching 100 degrees here soon. We'll talk about that rain chances and that cold front here in just a few more minutes. Elise. All right, thanks, Chris. Well, yesterday it was not only National Voter Registration Day, but it's also it was also rather National Constitution Day. Crowder College in Neosho held a Constitution Day event. As KOM's Lonnie Walton shows us, the goal was to educate students about becoming registered voters and show how powerful one voice can be. It is a federal holiday and all community colleges and colleges and universities that receive federal financial aid are required to recognize it, but it's also a really good opportunity for us to just remember to stop and talk about our Constitution. It is the foundation of the government that we live under. Professor Dina Klammer, Chair of Social Science Division at Crowder College, wants her students to understand it's not all about numbers. One person can change everything. The power of one person when they decide that they are going to use their voice that they really can make a difference. She's referring to Gregory Watson's 27th Amendment, which forbids changes to the salary of congregational members until the next election concludes. Klammer says this movement was led by one. The 27th Amendment was passed really because of the power of one person. One person took hold of this thing that had been proposed a long time ago and then just sort of left on the desk to to rot and said, hey, actually, I think this is a good idea. And they were able to actually lead a movement to get this amendment passed. Also, while learning the Constitution, students had the chance to register to vote, which freshman Ashlyn Fox says it's a first. Um, and then just, I think, understanding the process of voting because I'm going to go into it like blindly because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> We want to create a civil serving, literate learning community of responsible citizens. Reporting in the O Show, I'm Lonnie Walton, KOAM News. Now, the League of Women Voters also stopped by to help students register to vote. Clymer hopes the event also promotes the importance of the Constitution, especially for young voters. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOAM Morning News. AI seems to be finding ways to help us in everyday life. 
We'll hear how ice cream shops are using AI to help boost sales. We'll be right back, but first, here's a live look from the city square in Humboldt, Kansas. In Consumer Watch this morning, a federal agency gives the OK for Apple's new sleep apnea detection feature. Now, the FDA cleared the feature for use and is now accessible in Apple Watches, including the Series 9, 10 and Ultra 2. The watch will monitor a user's breathing disturbances while they sleep and display nightly metrics in the health app. Health experts warn the features results may not always be accurate and insurance companies may not pay for sleep apnea therapies based on the watch's data alone. Well, four out of five parents are moving their children out of booster seats too early. Only 25% of parents knew that children should ride in boosters until they are at least four foot nine. Now experts say you can use a safety belt fit test to determine if your child is ready to move on from the booster seat. If the child's knees bend at the edge of the seat and both the lap belt and shoulder belt fit properly, then your child may be ready. Well, the Target car seat trade in program is back from now until September 28th. Customers who trade in their old car seats or bases at Target will receive a 20% discount for a brand new car seat stroller or select baby gear. Customers can drop off their old car car seat in the designated boxes set up near guest services. Then scan a QR code near the drop off boxes in order to redeem the target circle bonus. Now the company has recycled more than 45 million pounds of car seat materials since the program started back in 2016. Well, Meta has announced a new kind of Instagram account just for teenagers. Fox Business correspondent Madison Ulworth has the details. Teens on Instagram will soon have a new experience. All teens on the platform are being rolled over to the new Instagram teen accounts. The new setup comes with a slew of built-in protections for users under 18 years old. Let's talk about some of those protections. All teen accounts will be switched over to private and there will be restrictions on who they can message and what content they can see. A big part is also the time management because let's be honest, even adults struggle with how much time they spend on social media. Teen accounts will be set to a sleep mode, which will prevent them from getting notifications at night. And parents can limit how much time teens spend on the app from as much as two hours a day to as little as 15 minutes, upon which time they will be locked out of the app until the next day. Teens cannot adjust the settings without parental approval. And if they try to change their birthday in order to make them older and avoid these restrictions, they will need to provide a valid ID to confirm that new birthday. This is a major change for the social media platform. Meta and Instagram are going well beyond their contemporaries with a goal to get teens on Instagram less. But Meta tells me they are okay with that if it means healthier and happier users over the long haul. But this is also coming at a time when social media is under pressure. Parents are on Capitol Hill this week lobbying Congress to pass tougher regulations like the Kids Online Safety Act, or COSA, which would restrict social media companies' interactions with minors. I asked Meta's global head of safety about the timing of their rollout. That bill would put a lot of onus on social media companies. Is there any connection in terms of the rollout of this? Or, and how do you feel about the COSA bill? So this launch was really designed to uh, take in parents' concerns, to take in their biggest concerns and to respond specifically to those concerns. This change is rolling out over the next 60 days. All teen accounts will be switched over. In New York, I'm Madison Allworth, Fox Business. And those are our top consumer stories. Let's take a look at the market prices before the opening bell.
Welcome back to the KOM Morning News 743, just about to be 744 now on this Wednesday morning, taking a live look from the MoDOT camera 20th and range line in Joplin. We've got some partly cloudy skies out there, but otherwise a pretty decent start to the day, albeit a bit on the mild side for this time of year. There's that sunshine we talked about. KDOT camera 69 in Kansas crossing, starting to make its way across the highway as the sun continues to rise out there this morning. Future track for today. Very similar to what we've seen or what we saw rather yesterday. We'll have some partly cloudy skies and eventually by late afternoon, early evening, they'll go mostly clear. It will be that way through most of the night. Then we'll have an opportunity early Thursday for a few scattered or isolated to scattered showers. Maybe a couple of thunderstorms out there. Not expecting too much from this first batch and it'll die out by about say 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. Shouldn't even make it into Missouri. But we'll have a few of those showers out there. As we head into Thursday afternoon, now because of that, we're going to be muggy. It's going to be breezy. South winds gusting at 20. Heat index values approaching 100. And then by the evening, we're going to see another round of showers and storms. This one will actually bring some meaningful rainfall with it across Kansas and Oklahoma. So here we are at 8. We got these thunderstorms stretching from Fort Scott, Pittsburgh, Parsons, Coffeyville, and back up toward Yates Center uh, as we head into the evening. Now some of these storms, they may be in a dying state, but they may actually make it into Missouri. So Joplin, Neosho, Anderson, uh, around the Veda area, maybe even to Lamar, could see some rain out of this, and we'll see a few additional scattered storms back behind this as we head into Thursday evening. Then we go into our Friday, we clear out, we're partly cloudy, we're hot, we're muggy once again across the area, and then because the system is going to be a little closer, we'll have an opportunity for some pop up showers and storms initially on Friday. And then by late Friday, we'll see another round of scattered showers and thunderstorms begin to develop out in southeast Kansas and begin to make its way toward the east. So for overnight tonight to early tomorrow morning, we've got that thunderstorm chance. Maybe one or two might make it through. Then tomorrow evening, we do have a low risk for some strong to low grade severe storms, maybe some small hail and gusty winds out there. And then by Friday, we see have scattered thunderstorms across the area as well. Seventh and range line. We got some clouds out there as mentioned 65 in Joplin. The winds are calm. Humidity dew point both climbing up there slowly but surely around the area this morning. Most of us mid upper seven or 70s. My goodness, mid upper 60s as we get our day underway. We're looking at mid to upper 60s by eight is just around the corner. Partly cloudy skies pushing close to 80 by 11 o'clock this morning into the afternoon. <clears throat> Excuse me, boy. I need to just go take a nap, I think. We're looking at about 90 for our high today. Some of us a little warmer, some uh, maybe 88, 89 out there, but either way, you painted about 10 degrees above normal out across the region. 10, maybe even upwards of 15 degrees above normal tonight. Low to mid 70s, mostly clear skies out there. Then we head down the road. Again, mid 90s, Thursday, Friday. Heat index values could be approaching 100, especially on Thursday. We'll have scattered storm chances. Cold front finally gets here Saturday night. So ahead of it, low 90s, then about a 31 degree drop in temperatures Saturday night. Low 80s on Sunday, so close to average. More storms as that front slowly pushes its way through. And then as we head into the next work week, temperatures may even fall a little below normal out there. So very fall like as we kick into the first full week of fall. Let's check your forecast. We're back with more right after this. Well, businesses around the world are experimenting with artificial intelligence using tools like ChatGPT to an increase sales. Ice cream makers in Italy say it's helping them to scoop up new customers. Mm -hmm. Tina Kraus has the story. Italy has a centuries old love affair with ice cream. And a gelato maker in Milan is giving it a 21st century twist, churning out new flavors with the help of artificial intelligence. We started using ChatGPT, says Gianfranco Sampo, who owns the ice cream parlor. He says the AI tool helped to create a new frontier of flavors after they fed the chatbot a list of more than seven dozen current recipes. The first creation is white chocolate with a berry sauce, balsamic vinegar and caramelized black pepper, he says, a combination I never would have thought of. Makers say skeptics stop complaining after the first taste. I chose the two flavors created with artificial intelligence, this customer says. I must say this is very balanced, so it's very good. Another AI special, vegan salted and sandblasted hazelnut with oat milk and peaches sautéed in Prosecco. 
Massimo Grasso is credited as the gelato genius who put AI into the mix and says he's not worried technology will take his job away. He says chat GPT is not able to balance a recipe, so for the moment, my role is still fundamental. And chatbots can't eat it either. And that's sweet news for customers. Well, gelato makers say their experiment proves AI can sometimes be used to help companies without the need to get rid of jobs. Yeah, see, in this case, they're not, you know, have, they're not using AI to replace people. They're using AI to get more creative. Maybe think of things yeah. that we haven't thought Absolutely. of. Absolutely. And, and it's working Great out because tool. now they need more people because they're getting busier because they have these new flavors. See? Absolutely. Sometimes it's pretty it's good. Beneficial. Looks pretty good. Yeah. Well, we've got ourselves another mild start to the day out there, and it's going to be hot once again. Future track for today is very similar to yesterday. Uh, partly cloudy skies through the portion of the day. By late afternoon, early evening, we'll start to see mostly clear skies. As we discussed earlier, by early tomorrow morning, uh, some remnant showers, maybe a couple of thunderstorms rolling into southeast Kansas, parts of northeast Oklahoma, and by about 9, 10 o'clock, most of those will fizzle out. We'll be hot, muggy tomorrow. We're looking at heat index values approaching 100 degrees on Thursday. By Thursday evening, though, We'll have another round of showers and storms across the area. So by 8 o'clock southeast Kansas, a number of scattered storms out there. So not necessarily rain everywhere all at once, but showers and storms for sure. By the time they start to cross into Missouri, they're very likely going to be in kind of a decaying state. But some locations across Missouri may get some rainfall, but more of it happening in southeast Kansas. And then on our Friday, we're going to look at the opportunity. Initially, another hot, muggy day. So we'll have some pop-up storm chances in the first portion of our Friday. And by late evening Friday, We'll get another round of scattered storms out there and we have better storm chances into the weekend. So overnight tonight, early tomorrow, a couple of storms may be possible out there. Tomorrow evening, we do have a low end risk for some low grade severe storms. We're talking small hail, some gusty winds, and we're looking at some scattered storms on our Friday. We'll have another look at your forecast and the news you need to know right after this. And here's a check of today's top headlines. The news you need to know before you head out the door. Authorities are investigating the discovery of a man's body in a ditch along Interstate 44. The body, 63-year-old Jesse Gilmore of Oklahoma, was found near the Prigmore Street exit at mile marker 14.8. Now authorities are looking for a red 2020 Chevy Cobalt with the Oklahoma license plate PIH667. Authorities say it has significant damage to the passenger side rear door. Anyone who has seen this car in the past day or so should contact the Jasper County Sheriff's Office. Well, a fire truck and pickup collide in Newton County. The crash occurred on Zebra Road, two miles south of Fairview. The pickup failed to yield to the fire truck, which was on its way to another crash and struck the emergency vehicle. All three occupants of the truck were taken to Mercy Joplin. The Boys and Girls Club of Ottawa County Teen Center hosted a groundbreaking in Miami. The project has been in the works for about 33 months. The center will provide resources for teens such as resume building and workforce development. The center will also have a gym and art rooms. They hope to have the project ready by May 2025. Temperatures for most of us about 10 degrees above normal, topping out right around 90. Some of you maybe 91, 92, others 88, 89. But either way, paint it's still very warm out there. Partly cloudy skies through the afternoon, mostly clear skies later this evening, falling back about 15 degrees above average in some cases as we go to the low mid 70s. Heat index values tomorrow close to 100, mid upper 90s for us Thursday, Friday out there. Some thunderstorm chances as well. We have the cold front Saturday night, so still hot ahead of it. And then a 31 degree drop in temperatures closer to average for the first day of fall and then maybe even a little below normal as we head into the first week of fall with some more much needed rain chances Saturday and Sunday. So yeah. Well, a spectacular display of the Aurora Borealis, often called the Northern Lights, dazzled observers in Fairbanks, Alaska last week. This stunning footage of the Aurora was posted by Wandering Alaska, a company that runs Aurora Viewing Tours, which said the footage was not sped up. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's impressive. High Aurora activity was recorded on September 10th and 11th, according to researchers at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, and more high activity 
It was expected over September 16th and 17th. And so, yeah, we had some geomagnetic storms and yes. big solar flares, and that's what uh, sets off some of the most, you know, just some amazing things to see. Always incredible to see it. Well, thank you all so much for letting us put the good in your morning. We're back with more news and weather today at noon. Have a great rest of your morning.